I always was the spoiled kid. My parents were wealthy and decided to spend their money on smothering their only son with an incredible childhood. I had it all. My playroom was insane, a huge TV, pinball machines, and every time you can imagine. It was awesome. Despite having so much fun, I wasn't a brat about it. I can't say that now, having thoroughly examined my childhood. I loved to share my immense stash out of stuff with my friends. I gave my toys away, invited them over for pizza and movies, and was all around pretty generous. On paper, I should have been slipped as a spoiled sob, but for whatever reason, I wasn't good genes, I guess. On my ninth birthday, I had a bunch of friends over. My dad rented a huge moon moon bounce for us and decorated our backyard with superhero apparel. I was going for the major phrase. Tables were set up with punch and snacks, little finger foods to keep us from complaining until dinner. Balloons and banners were tied to every surface. My parents' way of establishing of how I love, loved I was. Music started playing from the giant speakers and my dad sat up on the back patio. My friends and I ran around and jammed out while waiting for our turn on the moon bounce. My grandparents arrived a couple of hours into the party, bringing them a party gift. My grandmother informed me that she had purchased it at a yard sale the weekend prior. It was giant yellow plastic clown head. It looked like one of those weird cheap toys from the 90s, something that was popular for a week before getting all of until its units shelved. Its face was white with red circles lined the pained eyes. A smile was smeared into its lips, a big goofy grin that was also painted on red. The nose was the bulbous orb of plastic that sat oddly on its head face like a gumball. As I turned over to its strange gifts in my hands, my grandfather handed me a plastic gold crown. He said it was part of the game. Seeing my confusion, my grandmother had laughed and explained to me what it was. She said that I was supposed to wear the crown of the clown head while my friends attempted to sneak up and crown me. I flipped its head over and it serrated a few notches of lining, some bald dome were where the crown went. I thought it was pretty lame, but I didn't want to be rude, but dolefully slid the plastic clown head over my own. The interior hard against my temples. As it settled over me, I realized that I couldn't see anything. Red light faltered around the plastic, but there was a concerning lack of eye holes. My grandfather chuckled as he watched me stumble around, hands outstretched so I wouldn't bump into anything. I asked why there were no eye holes and he told me it'd be too easy to win the game. I had to rely on my ears to keep my friends at bay. He said that the game was called Crown the Clown. I was beginning to understand the rules. It was like some sort of weird version of Pin the Tail and the Donkey, but with a crown and a clown instead. My friends had a gathered around to watch me, and as soon they were laughing, calling out for me. My grandmother tossed them one of them the crown, and the game began. It was surprisingly fun. The plastic mask got hot, but I didn't mind. I was too caught up on keeping my friends away from me and the crown off my head. After about 20 minutes, no one had managed to get me. I was laughing and stumbling around, doing my best to not bump into anything. My friend John was also calling out to me, but I didn't know if he had the crown or if he was trying to distract me. Turns out that he was trying to distract me. Suddenly, I felt something click over my head, followed by a great cheer from my friends. I had been crowned. F smiling and despite my defeat, I went to take the plastic head off of me, but I found that I couldn't. The neck hole was suddenly smaller, curling up tight under my chin and baiting into my skin. I tried tugging it harder, trying not to panic. The air inside thick head. What the hell? I wrapped my fingers around the base of the head, pulling up as hard as I could. I felt the rough edges cut into me and I immediately stopped. I could hear my friends laughing at me. Sure, I looked ridiculous. But at the same time, I couldn't find any humor in this situation. Sweat dropped into my eyes and I blinked against the burning sensation. My breath below blew back at me from the tight walls of the head and the red light flickering throughout the paint eye, making me dizzy and disoriented. I was suddenly aware of how claustrophobic the clown head was. 
I called out for someone to try and help me, doing my best to keep my panic in my voice. Still laughing, one of my friends came to my aid. I felt his heads around my ears and suddenly, I screamed as he jerked upwards. Pain exploded around my face and I shoved him away from me panting. Why couldn't I get this off of me? It had been so easy to put on, sliding the comfortable over my head with the little room to spare, but now everything was squishing onto me, the face opening to flush against my throat. I suddenly realized that my nose was bent against the plastic, bent painfully to the right. Then I understood what was happening. The clown head was shrinking. I screamed for someone to get it, uh, get my dad, sweat pouring from my face. The head st stuck in the combination of unfiltered breath and sweat, made me dizzy. My throat parched out, and my, but my lips were lined with perspiration. I felt the burning fingers of claustrophobia wrapped around my mind. My head squeezed a little tighter. I screamed again for my dad, my vision obscured with the head. I suddenly heard him from the front of me and felt his hands trace the outer line of my pr prison. His voice was changed to amusement to worry in the matter of seconds that scared me even more. I tried tugging in my head again, yelling into the plastic dome, explaining that it was getting tighter and tighter. My dad heard the panic in my voice and I felt him uselessly struggle to remove the source of agony. His fingers traced through how compressed the opening was at the bottom, trying to slice his fing slide his fingers in between the lip at the base and my skin, but just end up choking and gagging me as his knuckles burrowed into my throat. The clown head was gripping my head tighter. I wheezed and sunk into my knees, the heat and the lack of oxygen causing my head to swim. My dad was yelling at my friends, instructing them to go retrieve something from the woodshed. I didn't hear much. Instead, my head and I was concentrating on my breathing. My head throbbed as the hard plastic compressed my skull, like a grape of white waiting to pop. I heard my mom's concerning voice, a shrill inquiry, and that my dad ignored. I felt his fingers try to pry the head off of my throat, but he could tell I was fading. Panic cracked in the voice as I, he yelled at my friends to hurry. His fingers were back in my throat, digging desperately, trying to give me some kind of relief. I knelt before him, swaying slightly and sucking in hot, stinking air. Suddenly, my father tried to jam his hand fervor and felt my gag reflex engage. And my stomach rolled as I dry wretched to, into the hot plastic. My body hitched as I felt another wave coming. I tried to fight it, but I felt like I was going to stop a train. I vomited into the mask, gurgulated soda and pretzels gushing into my tight space. I gasped in the smell, let alone brought out the rocketing from my lips. It sloshed around my face, filled my ears, hot bile splashing against my skin with nowhere to go. It was trapped inside with a head along with me, and I was drowning in it. It just came just above my nostrils, slimy yellow line below my eyes. My father heard a yell gurgling in my, the head and quickly tried to lay me on my back, the vomit pouring out at my ears and driving me to a pocket to breathe. I gasped as the putrid air and the plastic tightened again. A wet, hard compress be that began to fill my vision with darkness. I felt my strength about to leave my body. My head was wrapped within the iron grip, and I didn't know how much longer I had in its clutches. Suddenly, my friend returned with the night my father asked for. I heard him instructing me, his voice drowned out as the puke in my ears. I he slowly turned me to the side and coughed and gagged against the slurping vomit. My nose felt like it was going to break against the walls of my prison. My ears burned and sweat coated with my skin. I felt my father slide something in hard and cold and along with the side of my neck, under the lying tip of the head. I immediately knew that it was a crowbar. I gripped my teeth with tears pouring out of my eyes as my dad apologized, his voice cracking with desperation. I howled as, I, as he applied the pressure and the crowbar was burrowing into my neck muscles. To my relief, I felt the mask just give a little, just slight lift that showed some vomit started to trickle out. Suddenly, the crown head tightened again, squeezing my skull harder than I could bear. I thrashed on the ground, screaming in agony, clawing at my head, and I felt like my skull 
would explode from the pressure and darkness swarmed to cover. I heard my father instructing my friends to hold me still as he ingested the crowbar. Sweaty hands pinned to me against the earth as my head was pushed sideways. I felt my father hoovering over me, the cold tongue of the crowbar licking the side of my neck. My father was apologizing over and over, and I knew something bad was about to happen. My muscles bulged out in revolt as my dad jammed the crowbar under the lip, digging into my skin and drawing blood. He shoved in until so hard till the surface rested against my cheek. I had intense warm blood streaming down my neck and across my shoulders. I heard my father whisper in the ears to brace myself. Suddenly, the overwhelming pressure cut the side of my face. I flashed violently, clutching my tearing out handful full of grass and pain as a pain shot from my cheek and a little on my neck, spreading like lightning. The edge of the crowbar crunched into my jaw as my father applied pressure, the last ditch effort to remove the clown head before it killed me. Tears ran down my face and the darkness shook my word. Puke and sweat covered in my face as I tried to escape the pain. My friends held me in place and I heard one of them crying. My teeth cracked against each other as my father continued to pull upward. With a sickening pop, I heard my jaw break and suddenly I was taken to the level of splintering agony. I didn't know, I didn't, ex I know, didn't know existed. My tongue wagged and went numb in my mouth. I felt a molar too free from my gums. It tumbled across my tongue like bloody candy. I felt how howling darkness rushed me. As it swallowed me, I felt the sudden urge of cool air, and the clown head cracked and finally shattered. As I blacked out, I felt my father shaking me, clutching me in his arms. His voice faded into the nothing. I awoke in the hospital a few hours later, my face wrapped in contorted sound of plastic that kept my jaw in place. I felt woozy and sick in my IV bag on my bed, dripping relief into my bloodstream. My mother and father were at my side, eyes bloodshot filled with my concern. My grandparents sat on the other side of the bed, and my grandmother was crying. As soon as they saw I was awake, I began to apologize all at once. My father doing what he did, and my grandparents for exposing me to such horrors. Their voices baffled, babbled into one. I let my eyes close once again as the drugs pumped in through my body, lowering me into a comfortable sleep. Thinking back on that day, I could still feel that horrible clown head, the way it smelled, the way the light filtered through the plastic, the weight of its resting across my skull. It's like one sick joke now. All these years now that I have recovered from the event, I can't help but feel disgusted amusement. Because you see... My jaw has never healed properly and there's a twisted scar tissue under the line of my cheek where the crowbar cut into me. My jaw is now the constant of a crooked humor, like a painful half-smile. Combination with the scar tissue stretching from my lips. Well, some would say I look kind of like a clown.